untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at my build of Mono Blue Hot Agent, featuring three copies of Flow of Knowledge 5 mana instant, lets us draw a card for each island we control and then we discard two cards. So this card is pretty awesome in this deck that's playing with 22 islands. We already have Thirst for Discovery which wants us to play a ton of basics, so no fancy lands in the mana base, not even the channel land. And Flow of Knowledge turns into this 5 mana draw 5 discard 2, but as the game progresses it will only get better and better, can potentially even cast it for 4 mana already if we play the turn 3 Hotigen, but that's not a play pattern you see very often since you typically want to wait to deploy Hotigen until you can protect it with a counter spell like Negate or Spell Pierce, not playing any cards like Slip Out the Back or Shore Up in this build, so that's not something we can count on, but overall I've been very happy with this configuration of interaction. We've got Fading Hope as a cheap bounce spell, consider as a cantrip to fill the graveyard for Talarian Terror and Haughty Jin. Then there's Impulse as another slightly more expensive cantrip, and then our counter spells at 2 mana are Essence Scatter for creatures, Negate for non creatures times 3 each. Two copies of Make Disappear as a more versatile counter spell that will become a lot worse in the late game, and then two copies of Spell Pierce, which can also catch the opponent off guard if they're not playing around a 1 mana counter spell. And then at 3 mana, there's Thirst for more card draw, can maybe discard some dead cards in some matchups. Let's say we're playing against a only creature deck, then we can discard Spell Pierce and Negate and keep our islands, otherwise just need to discard one island to draw three. And then now we have our triple flow of knowledge, alongside one copy of Invoke the Winds, five mana sorcery, can gain control of target artifact or creature and untap it. So best case scenario, steal the opponent's shieldred, so now if we draw cards we can gain a ton of life, but can just be a nice one-off to catch the opponent off guard once again, and can also get a discount from Haughty Jin, which remains the main win condition of the deck. Three mana for toughness, power equal to the number of instant and sorcery cards in our graveyard, gives all of those a uh, one mana discount as well, which is huge if you're trying to keep up multiple counter spells at once, and then it can also fly over any potential blockers, so it can often close out the game in a couple attacks. And then the other threat slash defensive measure of this deck, you could say, is Tolarian Terror. Since our deck doesn't get to play with any real spot removal, we of course can bounce creatures with Fading Hope and try and counter them on the way down, but sometimes some smaller creatures will slip through the cracks, so then having a 5-5 on the ground to play defense while we kill them with our flyer is a huge deal, and this also has a bit of built-in protection thanks to Ward, so sometimes the opponent will try and kill Tolarian Terror, pay the Ward cost, and then afterwards we can still counter whatever removal they had and to waste basically their entire turn, and this can often be cast for a single blue mana if we get enough instants and sorceries in the graveyard, as it will get a one mana discount for each one of them, so that's why in the early game it can also be important to not discard a land to thirst, but instead to discard several instants and sorceries just to make it easier to deploy Tolarian Terror, potentially play multiple copies in the same turn. And then at 22 basic islands, relatively high land count for this archetype, because we're playing all these 5 mana instants and sorceries that we would like to cast in a timely manner. So yeah, that's my current take on Mono Blue Hot Agent, a very budget friendly deck if that's what you're looking for. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and yeah, the sand seems fine. Can potentially Fading Hope to save our own Hardy Djinn from removal, if it comes to it. Phone on blue reds, not a lot of plays so far, and I'll keep another consider. on Jeskai colors. And they're gonna cast a union to gain some life and response. Tolarian Terror seems worth keeping. So next turn we can Thirst. Possible I don't need Fading Hope and I can just ditch a couple of them. Or we could Impulse, but uh, Thirst seems more mana efficient. Opponent with another union up to 32. Yeah, I'm kind of in favor of ditching double Fading Hope, which will also discount Tolarian Terror even more. Even though keeping them in the event of removal is pretty reasonable. So, 
play two mana terror, still have impulse available. And the ward makes it a little more awkward to answer than a haughty djinn. Can maybe wait until we find a negate to protect it. Still safe from a wandering emperor, exiling it with a minus two. And I think we grab another flow over haughty djinn. Since this may end up being a pretty grindy matchup. So hit for five. And then probably just pass. Don't want to present two creatures and have them both swept up by a depopulate, for instance. But on does have the Wandering Emperor. So, of course, they can just make a Samurai or plus now and then next turn exile Tolarian Terror with a minus two. So it may still be worth fighting over. But casting a flow is such a better play here that uh, I think we let that one slide. I've learned much during my travel. And then the correct move for them might be to just plus one and not make a samurai so they can keep the Wandering Emperor in play for a bit longer. So that's what they'll do. Remember your training. And then it's gonna cost them two mana to exile Terror here. The fairy, okay, so now they cannot exile Tolarian Terror. And Invoke could maybe steal a token, so that's fine. Faced with tragedy, even observers need to take action. And if we find a fading hope, that can also help clear a path. Who is that handsome devil? So now let's think: do we flow, draw five, discard two, or do we impulse plus thirst? And we get to see maybe a few more cards. Flow does get better the later it gets. Problem is, Flow is a little bit more awkward to double spell alongside Haughty Jin or Fading Hope if we find it. So I think we still Flow here. And this card. At this point, probably Spell Pierce. And I don't think our opponent plays many creatures, so as the Scatter can go. Do we impulse to look for Fading Hope? Do we just invoke the winds? Steal the illusion, attack to fairy, opponent chumps, next turn minus on Tolarian Terror. We have options. Stealing the token is not a bad idea since it's a good threat with Vigilance that the Wandering Emperor cannot exile. And we're probably gonna grow it faster than the opponent can. So I could also just go after Emperor instead of Teferi. Opponent chumps. Could also see them cast a Sweeper next turn. And Spell Pierce unlikely to be enough to counter it. Alright, Emperor deals with Terror, that's fine. Another mystery solved. And then we have to ask ourselves if we want to tap out for consider or if we keep up spell pierce. I think the answer is keep up spell pierce. Negate now a better counter spell. So we can definitely take out a planeswalker if we get to connect. Still don't feel like presenting two creatures, although now negate does maybe change the equation a little bit. So let's say I do play Haughty Jin. Attack, I would want to consider to grow my creature. Still have Spell Pierce and negate up. Yeah, that should be enough. And with double flow, I'm not afraid of running out of action anytime soon. Could have also gone for Thirst, since we haven't hit a land for the turn yet. But I'll keep a land with Consider. So, Teferi down. Or does our opponent have a response? If it's Iganjo to deal for damage, we can still draw with Thirst. It's going to be a Union. So that will give Teferi an extra loyalty. So let's Spell Pierce that. Since Spell Pierce is also getting worse by the second. 
play a line and pass. And we can potentially kill very quickly here with two creatures that keep getting bigger. Definitely happy to have the hard counters, especially when our deck wants to play a long game anyway with flow. The hard counters become much more valuable as the game progresses. Soul Partition could be bait for a sweeper. So I think I have to let that one go as much as I would like to keep the spirit. We've got the edge in this fight. And then keep up negate, just go for impulse. And find probably a Tolarian Terror. And a backup negate is perfect. So take out Emperor is probably going to be step one. Hope they don't have Igunjo. Alright, they had Igunjo. So in response, we probably flow at least once. Discard a couple islands. And then I'm happy with one mana terror, keep up negate. And then next turn we can redeploy Hotijin. It's a fairy, we'll try and counter. Opponent dissipates, okay. Fair enough. I'm so now we would like to find a bounce spell. I did discard two fading hopes early on, so there's still two left. Nice to but we should be able to find one. So we could flow for four mana, leaving potentially fading hope negate. Or we could... Thirst for Discovery twice, if it's necessary. Now let's Thirst. Double Terror. And then... Do I Thirst again? Do I just play a bunch of Terrors and keep up Negate? And just try and overwhelm the opponent that way? That might be fine. This at the Fairy. So we can beat Sweeper plus Counterspell here. Strike fast and strike hard. Bankbuster would grow the spirit up to a 6-6. Six, six. So that may be worth countering. And then a double block seems warranted. And then we could see a sweeper, which we can negate. And then we're potentially able to kill the opponent on the spot. We've got 26, 27 power, so yeah, another flow will do it. Draw 9, discard 2. Just make sure we don't uh, end up dying by drawing from an empty library. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. Good mix of counter spells and then consider to find some threats. Invoke the winds. Also going to be pretty good if we get to it. So play island pass. Opponent with turn one planes. So I'll keep an impulse, I think. Gives us something to do if our opponent doesn't play into our counter spell. Tolarian Terror is excellent, so just need to fill the graveyard now. And Guardian of New Banalia is annoying, but I don't think it's 
necessarily a must answer threat unlike let's say a Thalia would be and since we only have the one make disappear I'll let it slide Fading Hope could buy us some time too we could consider could just take the land I think I prefer a cheap cantrip to help hit or land drop to keep up counter spells and then also help with Tolarian Terror at the same time so definitely need an island here and there it is. So now we can hold up Make Disappear. Mono White's not going to have a ton of non-creature spells, so Negate and Spell Pierce are going to be at their worst here. But we can maybe discard them with Thirst. And a Peacekeeper is also worth countering. So we'll take two. And we could deploy a Tolarian Terror if we'd like. If I thirst and discard another instant or sorcery, we can still play Tolarian Terror, so maybe that's better. Since we know Spell Pierce and Negate are going to be pretty poor in the matchup. So, decline, discard Spell Pierce and Negate. And play one mana Tolarian Terror. Opponent's unable to get rid of it with, let's say, the one mana sorcery, and they also cannot exile with Brutal Cathar thanks to Ward. Okay, Sarah Paragon. We can maybe steal with Invoke the Winds. And that seems fine, as opposed to bouncing it first. And that can also help replay Haughty Jin if we even uh, discard it with Flow of Knowledge, for instance. Opponent trumps and discards. Nope, it's gonna take five. And then now Brutal Cathar can exile Tolarian Terror if they'd like, or get rid of their own Sarah Paragon. That's also acceptable. So now if they trump with Brutal Cathar, they'll get the Paragon back, essentially. So we'll just keep Tolarian Terror on defense and play for the long game. Now do we let it switch to nighttime is the question. Opponent could switch it back to day and then exile Tolarian Terror. I think we'll just main phase Fading Hope on a Guardian, since this transforming into a 3 power creature also lets them and list up to 5 power to attack past Tolarian Terror. And don't need an island. Okay, Flow of Knowledge is going to be pretty useful here. So we get to draw 6 and then discard 2. And triple Guardian of New Benalia. So, yeah, let's find a Haughty Djinn. No Haughty Djinn, but we can discard Spell Pierce and at this point maybe another island or make disappear. Got another flow at the ready. Can maybe impulse to try and find a Djinn. Discard island to thirst. There's a Haughty Djinn. And that's potentially going to present lethal next turn already. Yeah, just a land. Opponent can make a desperation attack, but then they probably should have held a land to discard. And between Thirst and Flow of Knowledge, we're going to be able to grow Haughty Djinn to set up 15 damage. Untap, take our draw step, and then we could potentially draw 8, discard 2, so Flow of Knowledge scales quite nicely into the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little weak to opposing creature aggro decks with no counter spells for creatures, but I'll try it. Double Consider can fill the graveyard for Tolarian Terror, so we can get that out pretty quickly. 
opponent's green white. Turn to companion. That resolves, so we'll consider. And Thirst for Discovery seems worth keeping. Next turn we can Impulse. Opponent on Enchantments, so they may present something worth countering, like a Tokasia's Welcome. Not Spell Pierce, and then we can still consider. And look for mm, Spell Pierce. It's losing value pretty quickly, but I could see another copy still being useful. And then we can impulse alongside it, perhaps. As opposed to having to negate. Naturalist resolves. So we could still spell pierce something, visitor we cannot. And a reign of truth will get spell pierced. But now our opponent's pretty far ahead on board, so we better find a creature soon. We've got a negate to protect it. And impulse to find it. Well, I'll grab an asset scatter. Fading hope. Do we want to bounce anything main phase or wait for the counters from Visitor, which likely go onto the Companion anyway? Yeah, I guess we'll wait. Still play a land, even though I could keep it for Thirst. More likely to play two two drops here anyway. So we'll take five. And then now, I guess we could Thirst. And uh, invoke the winds is tempting to keep. Do I just discard islands or do I keep the land since we have a flow of knowledge as another five drop? Opponent might have at least one removal spell in hand. So I'll discard impulse and maybe ask and scatter at this point. And then I can still fading hope visitor. And find a hottie gin. So now Haughty Jin keep up negate. And there's a circle, so hopefully they don't have another removal spell in hand, but it's not impossible. Opponent passes. And uh yeah, I can steal the Naturalist now. Or we can go for a flow of knowledge and maybe find more interaction, which is probably safer. So I could do it now. And there's another negate, perfect. Times two even. So if I hit for 11, taking at least five on the way back, opponent gains three. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, Flow of Knowledge has been very impressive so far. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, they know they're just unable to beat all this card advantage. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Fading Hope for any early creatures, and then wait until turn 4 to deploy Haughty Jin with Negate Backup. And Officer's pretty annoying. Although, I may be better off holding Fading Hope to bounce Thalia if that shows up, since that's much more threatening. So we'll take the two. Opponent passes, so they've got uh, two one ones at instant speed here. So now I'm probably fine using Fading Hope, although I could also hold it for an extra turn. I guess the main issue against Mono White Agar is that Brutal Cathar is their main removal spell, so we kind of need to find an Essence Scatter to save Haughty Jin. So I think going for Impulse here is reasonable. And then grab a Tolarian Terror for now. And then what if I just tap out for Haughty Jin? Opponent can exile it, but then Fading Hope brings it back. 
Although they could still have a laydown arms to exile Haughty Jin, so that's potentially a concern. Yeah, I guess for now we'll uh, pass and stick to the plan of turn 4 Haughty Jin. Opponent's blue white, so not too concerned about a potential laydown arms anymore. So let's consider. And then I could Fading Hope the Sky Strike Officer now. Negates pretty much a dead card in the matchup, so that's not ideal. So, do we keep Fading Hope for Brutal Cathar? Would still rather avoid my opponent drawing extra cards, so we'll bounce Officer. Uh, another Fading Hope's good. So now we can Haughty Jin with Fading Hope to protect from a Brutal Cathar. Alright, Shield of Argive instead, so that's pretty good against us too. I will have to find an Essence Scatter for it. And bounce it in my turn, potentially. Although now we don't have the Essence Scatter for it. Opponent could still pay the wards for Tolarian Terror and attack with Shield past Haughty Jin, which will only have three power, so they get to make a bunch of soldiers. So yeah, I think Bouncing Shield is probably still safer. And then play Tolarian Terror and might as well attack. And then need a Flow of Knowledge. Thirst would be great to discard these negates. If I hang back, our opponent gets to run away with uh, Sky Strike Officer and draw a ton of extra cards. If I attack and they Brutal Cathar one of my two blockers, and Shield of Argive gets to attack, and that's also very bad. They also have the Officer they can activate, so we're in a bit of trouble. I think I got a pass, and then really need one of those big card draw effects. There's a Cathar. At least we have two profitable blocks, so they shouldn't be able to attack with Shield of Argive here. And still on attack. So they just want the tokens to maybe set up the two mana legend or just to draw with the officer. Okay, let's consider to try and find some answers to make this appear. It's not going to be enough, is it? Impulse is good. That can dig pretty deep. Finding Tolarian Terror versus Consider. Tempted to grab the Consider since I still need one of the bigger card draw effects, although Terror is not a bad blocker on the ground. I think we need to go bigger. Fading Hope gets back Tolarian Terror, so that's probably okay. And then now we get to hit for 8. And potentially turn this into a 2-turn clock. So there's a Flyer, although we can bounce it with Fading Hope to get rid of it. And a Siege Veteran is not going to change that, so we should have it now. Opponent attacks. And we'll just bounce the officer. And that should do it. So yeah, despite drawing double negates, which as I've said is probably a dead card in the matchup, Haughty Jin is just good enough to get there. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Good mix of two-mana interaction and then impulse. Depending on the matchup, can find more of what we need. Opponent a three-color deck at least. And a bankbuster. Probably make it disappear, keep negate for later. Could 
could already deploy Hot Egen. Still tempted to wait until we can protect it better. And Restoration is fine. Let's just Impulse. And then I could go for Consider. Cast it. And then I wouldn't mind an Island. So we can play Jin, Keep Up Negate. But if we don't, then I'm sure we'll find some other goodies. Another impulse I probably don't need. Alright, so now we get to play Jin, and we've got a ton more instance in the graveyard to increase its power. So our opponent does get back Bankbuster now, but going to be a while before they actually get extra cards. Put on discarded portals, so they're a reanimator deck, so we're definitely going to need to negate. And do I tap out? They're likely to have a Wandering Emperor. Don't know if they would have other instant speed removal, but it's not impossible, so I'll play it safe. And then start with an Impulse. Alright, opponent's going to bounce Hadi Jin. That's fine, can still replay it, keep up negate afterwards. And I think keep a Tolarian Terror as well. Restoration transforms. Thirst. That's fine. So I can likely consider now. And probably don't need Essence Scatter. Okay, I think it's time to just uh, empty out our hands, double Tolarian Terror, and then keep up Negates for protection. Probably keep Island to maybe discard to a Thirst. Bankbuster draws. And gotta make sure they don't bring back portals since that would be devastating here. Alright, Wandering Emperor to exile Haughty Jin. Might be worth fighting over. And then can I present Lethal next turn if nothing else happens? Yeah, I would have a lethal on board, so we'll try it. Get to untap, another terror. Doesn't change the equation. Attack with all. And we would have 13 exactly. All right, sweet. Dodged a bullet there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Could use some actual interaction, but playing an early Talarian Terror as a blocker is kind of its own form of interaction. Monorad on the draw is going to be a tough matchup, so I'll be very surprised if we win this one, but we'll try. Turn to Felden, so yeah, that's already three damage. So this should be our worst matchup. This and maybe like a turn one evolved sleeper are the things we don't want to see. Gonna make this appear at the ready, but we're taking five already. And a creature lands added onto that. Opponent with a Lightning Strike, end of turn, sure. So we're at 8. Foundry puts us to 1. I think we need to Thirst so we can deploy double Tolarian Terror potentially. Discarding, make disappear, and 
probably an impulse at this point. So now I can play double terror, but that would still leave me dead on board. Yeah, I don't think we have an out. Hope the opponent doesn't see it. So, yeah, had things lined up slightly differently. We get to use our counter spell on turn two. We have three more life to work with, and then now we get to untap and keep up our counter spells. We might have been okay, but just uh, too much aggression early on. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable. Up against, could it be mono black? Bankbuster, sadly we cannot counter. I've got a thirst lined up now. And an evolved sleeper. It's kind of a must counter threat, although we have double fading hope to reset it. Which may be more mana efficient if we thirst now and then fading hope later. And an island can go. Alright, so... I think we just pass here. Got an answer to shield it if that shows up. Can also try and steal something. Although we'd prefer to use this on a more expensive card. So that if our opponent's ends up killing it, they at least lost a bit of mana in the process. Take one for now. And then we can impulse. Finding another thirst, or do we prefer consider to make it easier to play Tolarian Terror here, since we can cast it right away. I wouldn't say no to a land either for flow of knowledge. There's another flow of knowledge. Difficult to turn down, but can't really cast it if we keep another copy. Well, we drew one anyway. So, do we want to try and set up our next draw step? Feels bad to bounce an unevolved evolved sleeper, although I guess I'll be able to put a counter on it end of turn. Makes our Tolarian Terror a little cheaper too. Sure, lots fading hope. And then Island on top. Opponent has to discard a cut down to hand size. That card wasn't going to be very good anyway. And then now play Terror, keep up Essence Scatter. Problem is I don't have a negate for an Invoke Despair, which is likely to be their play next turn. So I think we just pass with Flow of Knowledge instead. Trespassers also a problem. Cruise Bangbuster to hit for 4 and then shrinks down our graveyard. So that may be worth countering too. Although Tolarian Terror can hold it off. So maybe I prefer Flow of Knowledge try and find a negate, and then we can play Terror with negate backup, take it from there. So we'll take four. And there's Sleeper. No negates. I want to discard. Tolarian Terror costs 2 mana once this goes to the graveyard, so I could play a pair of them. So probably just double islands. Okay, Make Disappear is an answer to an Invoke Despair potentially, so that's a big deal. So we'll play double Terror. And pass it back. And 
others invoke despair. So I'm not going to see any more attacks. And then we'll have to decide if we want to go on the B-Town plan or play it slow. Another thirst. Alright, so still would like to find more negates, counters for non-creature spells. So we can dig towards it with thirst or with impulse. Don't think I want to tap out for a 5 drop. So impulse digs the deepest here for one specific answer. So let's start there. This will also keep it daytime for trespasser. And the make disappear will do. Since our opponent's still stuck on 5. So now I might be able to attack with both and punish a double block with Fading Hope. And uh, yeah, we might be able to win the race. Opponent crews Bankbuster, so they're trying to set up a double block. And then what do we bounce is a question. If I bounce Bankbuster, I kill Evolve Sleeper. Bounce Sleeper, I kill Bankbuster, which close to making a pilot. If they replay Bankbuster, it feels like that's probably a losing proposition since they're behind on board. So I may be better off killing Sleeper, which threatens to be a cheap Death Touch creature. So let's bounce Bankbuster, kill Sleeper. And then don't think I need an island. Let damage happen. Can make disappear another Invoke Despair. And as a Scatter a Shieldred. Although Invoke the Winds and Shieldred is sort of tempting too. Since I get to hit them for 10, they wouldn't have any blockers. And then Invoke Despair is not the end of the world. Yeah, I guess I should Thirst in response then. Discard as a Scatter. And another Thirst. Shieldred resolves. And another Sleeper. Alright. That's an extra blocker. So ideally draw lanes. Fading Hope also helpful. So steal Shieldreds. Attack for 10. Possible bouncing sleeper was worth it. But this gives me more options in case your opponent presents another shieldred. I would love to cast a flow of knowledge with a shieldred in play, but I don't think it's going to get to that point. Opponent takes 10. Pass it back. Shieldred down to 3. And uh, yeah, opponent's in big trouble. Can't think of any one specific card that saves them, so they probably need a combination of cards. And our opponent explodes, yeah, stealing Shieldred. Definitely a pretty nice move. Alright, so we get to see our mono blue deck in action, and Flow of Knowledge was incredibly impressive almost every time we played it, so I highly recommend adding it to the archetype if you haven't already. And then if you want to beat this strategy, as we've discussed during the gameplay, Mono Red Aggro is one way to do it, especially if you're on the play. Uh, turn 1 Evolved Sleeper, something you can sink your mana into to avoid counter spells is always useful, especially if it later can also attack past the 5-5 Tolarian Terror. Graveyard Hate can also be a way to stop the Mono Blue Menace. Something like a turn 2 Unlicensed Hearse can be incredibly difficult for the deck to deal with, since it can shrink down your hot Gin and make it almost impossible to cast your Tolarian terror so there's definitely ways to beat this deck just be prepared for it if it does increase in popularity so that's going to do it for today's gameplay want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day i also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd